Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm going to be painting this dreamy, misty riverbank scene. It's inspired by a photograph that I found on Pixabay. Here's the photograph, and I've loosely interpreted it. I've simply moved the tree over to the left a little, and of course simplified it a bit. I shall leave a link to the reference photograph from Pixabay in the description below. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed watercolour paper and it's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 20 degrees um, so gravity will help with the wet in wet washes. I've loosely sketched out the scene in pencil and I shall now wet the page all over with a large wash brush and paint a graduated wash using raw sienna, alizarin crimson and some Payne's grey and I shall put in a misty distant riverbank and tree line while it's all still wet and then I shall put in some foreground riverbanks in slightly stronger colours so that the rest recedes. So the graduated wash is there. I've got this lovely sort of pink twilight glow that evokes the mist as it gets paler over the river. And I'm using slightly stronger paint, a drier mix, because if it was wetter than the paper at the moment, I'd run the risk of creating um, cauliflowers or runbacks. And then using a clean, damp, small wash brush um, or mop brush to just soften that riverbank, that distant shoreline a little bit then I can come back and add just a little bit more suggested detail into the foreground. First with a little bit more paint, keeping that paint nice and rich with all my three colours that I've used so far, alizarin crimson, Payne's grey and raw sienna, just kind of dabbed in um, to add sort of depth, variety and texture, ready to scrape in some reeds and grasses with a palette knife.
my wash is still just damp so if I keep my brush dry I can um, just soften back the river bank and add a, a little bit more dark across there before it dries and the last thing I'm going to do is sprinkle a little bit of ordinary table salt into the foreground I'm not using much just a small sprinkle around the edges so that where I've scraped um, through the paint and created reeds and grasses I can put in some little flowers and weeds growing out from this foreground riverbank as each grain of salt will push out the paint the damp paint and produce a little bloom or cauliflower mark which can be quite pretty as long as I don't overdo it and don't try this on paper that's too wet, otherwise it'll just make a big mess. So now I need to leave everything to dry completely and then come back and paint in my winter tree. So here it is and it's dried back really nicely. I'm going to try something a bit different now for the tree. Um, rather than using a paintbrush to paint in the winter tree, I'm using one of my stick pens and I've mixed up um, a dark mixture of all three of my colours, alizarin crimson, raw sienna, Payne's grey with some raw umber, plenty of, um, sorry, burnt umber in it. So I've got this brownish, dark brownish mix that harmonises with the painting and I'm using the stick pen to draw in using the watercolour paint and trying to get this sort of very sort of naturalistic loose tree. You can, of course, paint this in with a small round brush or a lining brush of some sort, a rigger or a sword liner to get nice, loose, naturalistic lines too. So now that that's the tree mostly in, I can put in some stronger reeds around my etched in marks that I created in the wet wash with the palette knife and around the little salt blossoms that I created in the wet wash too. This time I'm using the stick pen and you could use the lining brush for this and just dragging up a few sort of uh, wayward looking stronger reeds into this foreground riverbank. And the more detail that I put into the foreground, as long as I don't overdo it, it just keeps everything else, the misty river scene, pushed well back. Keeps it nice and soft and adds to that impression of mist.
I think that's just about finished. You could add a bit more detail to the tree, maybe some dry brush over the small twigs at the end of the branches. But I like the simplicity of it as it is. So I'm going to remove the masking tape and look at it and see how it looks with a clean white border. Um, it's a little bit darker than this because the sun is washing the colours out slightly uh, coming through the windows of my studio. But overall, I think I'm quite pleased with this. I think I just need to add a couple more branches just to link these two uh, close sort of trees here. And if I can do that, it just pulls those two together a little bit more strongly. When you... Um, remove the masking tape, it lets you see the painting with fresh eyes and you can see if there's any minor adjustments or large adjustments that need to be made. Um, and now's the time to make those adjustments. So I'm quite pleased with this. I like the effects, I like the colours, and I'm really pleased with using the stick pen instead of a brush to draw with watercolour paint to produce quite a nice stylized but naturalistic looking tree. I hope you'll have a go at something similar, maybe use different colours, um, a different photograph. Um, I'm not really trying to sort of demonstrate a tutorial here, it's more just sort of method for using wet in wet washes, um, really soft colours to produce these misty effects. Do let me know what you think in the comments and if you have any advice for viewers about creating these misty effects, we'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. It really helps us to keep this channel going. And if you'd like to support Morgana or myself, then please follow the links below to our Patreon groups. Thanks so much. Take care and happy painting. Bye.